Hello, travel buddies. I'm in Rome. Rome was the first destination on our one-month trip across Europe. We spent four nights here. This city was once the heart of the Roman Empire, which greatly influenced today's Western politics, laws, buildings, and culture. We chose a hotel close to the Trevi Fountain, so we could visit it several times while staying in Rome. It is 4:30 in the morning, and we're going to the Trevi Fountain. We will see whether there are less people there, because it was super crowded last night. The fountain is the largest Baroque fountain in Rome. By the third century AD, Rome had eleven large aqueducts that brought water from up to 92 kilometers away. They could bring up to one million cubic meters of water every day. The Trevi Fountain gets its water from one of these. The Aqua Virgo aqueducts. Even today, many of the aqueducts are still functioning, and you can find running water taps all over Rome. The statues in the fountain are laden with symbolism. At the Trevi Fountain's heart, Oceanus commands, flanked by tritons with seahorses depicting the sea's moods. While the statues of abundance and health represent water's prosperity and well-being, it is said if you throw the coin over your left shoulder, use your right hand into the fountain, you will come back to Rome again. Coins are gathered from the fountain three times a week, and the money is donated to charity. Please watch over the area all day and night. The Church of Saint Ignatius of Loyola is just a short walk, 300 meters from Trevi Fountain. It's known for its incredible ceiling frescoes that create an optical illusion. Instead of a real dome, the church has a painted one that looks three-dimensional. A clever trick used when there wasn't enough money to build an actual dome. The artist Andrew Pozzo, a famous Italian painter, created these works. To see the ceiling better, you can spend one euro to turn on the light for a big mirror placed under it, which stays lit for two minutes. We found that two minutes wasn't enough, so we paid one more euro. Walking another 300 meters from the church, we reached the Pantheon. The Pantheon in Rome, famous for its immense dome, set a precedent for all the subsequent domes in the world, including the White House in USA. Pantheon in Greek means all divine. It's home to the world's largest dome, made without any metal supports. Built almost 2,000 years ago, its width and height, from the floor to the top, are the same. The dome has a big hole in the middle called the oculus, which lets in sunlight. Even today, experts are still trying to figure out what kind of materials and concrete were used for the dome, as it has lasted through earthquakes and other damage over the years. The Pantheon is known for its huge granite columns that came from Egypt. They stay up just by being heavy and really well balanced, without needing any kind of glue. In the Middle Ages. The Pantheon was even used as a fortress because of its thick walls and large bronze doors. But now it serves as a Christian church. Inside the Pantheon, you will find the grave of Raphael, a super famous artist from the Renaissance. Some Italian kings are buried here too. Ancient Romans. Loved making piazzas or public squares, which were big parts of their city life for things like government, religion, business, and socializing. 
The Pantheon is on one side of a square called Piazza della Rotonda. Here, visitors can chill by the Pantheon's fountain, enjoy real Italian opera, or grab lunch at a cafe right across from the Pantheon. This is Piazza Navona, two minutes walk from the Pantheon. It has two famous works. One of them is the fountain behind me and another one is the church facing it. The fountain and the church were designed by two famous architects 300 years ago. And do you know they were in competition? That's why the architect who designed the fountain shielded one of his statues from the church. And the architect's name was Bernini. The fountain is known as Four Rivers. The Church of St. Annesi in Nagone was designed by Francesco Baromini, who was Bernini's rival when contributing their work to Piazza Navona. This church is considered a prime example of Baroque architecture in Rome. Its elaborate facade beautiful interior and the Baromini's use of light and the shadow contrasts made it stand out. Piazza Novana used to be a stadium where people watched athletic competitions, including chariot and boat races. The word agone in the church's name refers to these athletic contests which is why the square is long and oval. In the 17th and 18th centuries, they would sometimes block the drains of the square's three fountains to flood the piazza for boat races. Like other public squares in the ancient Roman Empire, Piazza Navona is a hub of community life for locals. Located just 600 meters from our hotel, the Spanish Steps is a short walk away. In 2023, the Spanish Steps were featured in two Hollywood movies. In 1953, the Spanish Steps were featured in the movie Roman Holiday. The Spanish Steps, one of the Europe's largest staircases with 172 steps, were constructed 300 years ago. Featuring both curved and straight sections, they provide stunning views. These steps stretch from the Piazza di Spagna at the bottom to Piazza Trinità dei Monti at the top, along with its church. The Spanish steps was named after the nearby Spanish embassy. Squares are lively gathering spots in Rome. I recommend visiting Piazza di Spagna to relax on the steps or heading up to Piazza Trinità dei Monti for a breathtaking city view. Located at the foot of the steps is the Boccaccia Fountain, crafted by Bernini and his father Pietro Bernini, in the shape of a sinking ship. This design was inspired by the Tiber River's flood in 1598. Though we missed visiting the church, you are free to explore it. Just a hundred meters from the Spanish steps, you'll find the column of the Immaculate Conception. It's topped with a bronze statue of the Virgin Mary, freshly decorated with a wreath from the December 8th celebration. You can visit all five landmarks mentioned above in one day because they're close enough to walk to, as long as you don't spend too much time at each spot. Now, Vatican City is a must-visit place in Rome. It's an independent country ruled by the Pope and has 819 people living there. Inside, there are two important attractions we should see. Now we're going to the Vatican Museums. 
The Vatican museums originated from the private art collection of the Pope, dating back to Pope Julius II in the early 16th century. You need to spend a whole day to see the Vatican museums and the nearby St. Peter's Basilica. The museums are very big, with galleries in the corridors that stretch for more than 7 kilometers. They have a large art collection with over 70,000 items and 20,000 of these are shown to the public. This includes famous works like Michelangelo's ceiling and the Last Judgment fresco, as well as Raphael's rooms. There are lots of interesting things about the art in the Vatican museums, so I will make a separate video to talk about them. It's a 13-minute walk from the Vatican Museums to St. Peter's Basilica, another major attraction in Vatican City. Bernini designed St. Peter's Square. It's oval, with two wide sets of columns that look like open arms welcoming people. These columns are lined with 140 statues of saints. In the square center, there's an old Egyptian obelisk that acts like a giant sundial. Like Rome's other squares, St. Peter's Square is a spot for people to meet, attend religious events, and it can fit around 300,000 people, especially when the Pope makes an appearance. St. Peter's Basilica is the largest church in the world. It is believed to build over the burial site of St. Peter, one of Jesus Christ's disciples and the first Pope. It's believed that St. Peter's tomb lies right beneath the high altar where you see Benini's huge, ornate bronze canopy called the Boda King. Michelangelo designed the massive dome above it, one of the world's largest. The Boda King is topped by the great dome. I recommend spending most of the day visiting the Colosseum area. There are three places to visit in this area. Palatine Hill, Roman Forum, and the Colosseum. We joined a small guided group so we could skip the line. The tour guide is archaeologist, so he says some boring stuff. No, I'm kidding, he's good and thorough. We visited Roman Forum first, once was the center of public and political life in ancient Roman Empire, then Palatine Hill, one of the earliest areas of a settlement in Rome, and finally the Colosseum. I will make a separate video about them as there are many interesting facts revealed during the visit. Exiting the Colosseum, you'll find Via dei Fori Imperiali, a central road in Rome stretching from Piazza Venezia to the Colosseum. Constructed under Mussolini, it led to the demolition of historical buildings but also unearthed ancient sites like Caesar's and Augustus' forums. Today, the road is a hub of joy and relaxation, especially stunning after sunset.
A key attraction at its start is the monument of Victor Emmanuel II at Piazza Venezia. Built in 1935 to honor Italy's first unified king, made of white marbles, it stands out with its grand stairways, columns, and an equestrian statue. Despite housing the Museum of Italian Reunification and offering a panoramic view from its terrace, we didn't visit due to time constraints. We did enjoy dinner with a city view at the cafe on the first level. Rome is a city full of life and history. Everywhere you go, there's something to try, like tasty street food, luxurious Italian chocolate, or famous gelato. The past is a part of the present in Rome, where old ruins are a normal part of the city scene. Even in a small hotel where we stayed, we could feel a sense of a history, with all the old paintings and marble statues around. The tile floors all around Rome are really amazing because some of them were made more than 2,000 years ago and are still used today, even with cars driving over them. These floors show how well the ancient Romans built things. The buildings in Rome look like they come from the past, keeping the city's ancient style alive. Just walking around and looking at things in shop windows is fun. The people in Rome are friendly too, which makes visiting here even better. Our next stop is Florence, but first let's go into the Vatican Museum to look at the arts.